Hey y'all, Kim here. So I kind of teased this in the ACPD video, but today I'm going to be talking about getting rootless XORG without need for any form of login D. Now, this is going to mainly be Gen 2 focused with some little hints as far as like things I had to tweak to do it on Void, but pretty much any distro that doesn't build X server with a hard dependency on login D should be able to follow, if not these exact steps, similar ones. So now that I've mentioned that this is primarily Gen 2 focused, let's look at use flags. So Xorg server is the only package that you should need to tweak use flags for to get this to work. And the only relevant ones, I mean, systemd should already be disabled if you're running OpenRC or run it or whatever. You want to make sure that the e login d use flag is disabled. And suid won't really break things either way, so. If you want more immediate feedback for whether it's working or not, disable it so that Xorg just can't run as fruit without like sudo or do as, maybe. And if you'd rather have the potential for a graphical environment to troubleshoot with, then keep this enabled. And also one more thing I should note, relatively early in the video, is that these steps I'm going to go through, I have no idea how or if they could work with the Display Manager. I'm the type to just log into the TTY and type start X and hit enter, so yeah, at, at the end I'll go over some thoughts about potential tweaks for a Display Manager, but I haven't actually tried it that way, so they could just be complete nonsense. Okay, so back to use flags. Once you got eLogin D and System D disabled and SUID however you want it, rebuild Xorg server, but don't log out yet. And while it's rebuilding or afterward, you're gonna want to make a little script. So I have mine at slash usr slash local slash bin slash user x. You can call it pretty much whatever you want, but as long as it's somewhere that you can easily launch at. So, the script, at least the way I have it, pretty much all of it at this point requires root permissions, but it's also important to know what user is going to be running the X server. So this first line is pretty much just if we're not running as root, figure out who we are running as and just pass that to the script, making sure to run it as root. And also a side note, I have my duos.conf set up so that I can run this password list. It's up to you whether you feel like doing that. And then because there's this line down here that actually needs to know a username, I just have this line making sure that some argument got passed to it. And if not, if the first argument is a zero length string, then it just echoes what the issue is and exits with error. So now, the more important bits. This is changing ownership of the XORG binary so that it's owned by the input group. And then this next line makes it set GID. So what this does is it makes it so that when you run Xorg, 
it runs mostly with your permissions, but also with those of the input group, which are pretty important if you want to use weird peripherals like a mouse or a keyboard. And the typical alternative to this is to just put your user in the input group, but that's generally frowned upon from a security standpoint since it makes it easier to run keyloggers and such. So I don't actually know how much safer this is, but it's probably less bad at least. And then, little void note here. At least on the void install I did recently, this xorg path here is just a shell script that launches xorg.rapid if, if it exists and slash usr slash libexec slash xorg if it doesn't. So the smart thing to do here would probably be to replace these two paths with the path to xorg.rap. What I did was I just switched bin to libexec and it just works. Whichever you switch it to, make a note of what path you went with, because it's going to be important for a later step. And then this line is why we need the username. It's, it's a really dumb, just works kind of thing, but this is changing ownership of a TTY I want for TTY7 to whatever user you're going to be running XORG as. And I mean, as dumb as it is, I checked on a systemd distro and apparently logind does this too, so whatever, I guess. Also, on void, this line might not actually be helpful or needed because at least on the base install I did it seems like the default flags that it passes when launching an X server include keep TTY so it'll just not switch to TTY7 even if you tell it to. So yeah, just little thing to keep in mind. Then one thing I used to do with the script and don't anymore because it was stupid is making the X server RC file, which I mean you still need this file but you only need to make it like once so it seems better to just make it than to have the script make it every time it's run and be making it as root so it has to change ownership. So yeah, once the user x script is done and set up someplace, just kind of save and quit. And then for the aforementioned x server rc, so it's just in your home folder dot X server RC and all you need is this one line exec av slash usr slash bin slash x which will be right for gen 2. I think I'm I hope I have something in my notes about whether it's right for void. Okay, looks like I don't, but I'm pretty sure you just point this to whatever file you changed the permissions for earlier. So either usr libexec xorg or wherever xorg.rap is, I think also usr libexec. Then as far as flags to pass it, no listen TCP is a good one to have. I'm still not 100% clear on this, but my understanding from what I was reading is that not having this means that 
if you have your X server exposed to the internet, then this, like, not having it allows access to it without SSH, which is kind of obviously not good. Then defer glyphs all... Literally the only reference I could find on this was from, like, a PDF from 1995, so I don't 100% know what this does, but according to that PDF, it caches font rendering stuff to improve performance. See, I know two of the options are all and I think like 16 or something, which is just do it for 16-bit fonts. I don't know if it's actually a performance boost on modern systems or if I'm even understanding it right, but yeah, that's a flag that I have. Then, pretty sure this dollar at sign is just telling it to pass along whatever flags it gets elsewhere in the pipeline. And then VT7 is just pointing it to TTY7, which is the one that I had the user X script change permissions for. On void this, you would just want to either change to dash keep tty or just completely exclude because part of the default options are keep tty and i didn't actually go over what x server rc does but pretty much during start x slash xinet this is just how it's going to call the x server so yeah, that's why it's just the path to X and whatever flags you want to pass at. And if you want to attempt to learn more about these flags or see what other ones exist, man X server with the capital X should be it on most distros. I remember that being it for Gen 2. I think that was it for Void as well. And yeah, so at this point, assuming Xorg server is done rebuilding, you should be good to drop back down to TTY, run the user X script, and try running StartX, see if it works. For void, if you followed these steps exactly instead of like the void notes, You'll probably run into some permissions issues just because it's trying to both keep the TTY it's on. I think it even has VT1 hard-coded for that. And also trying to switch to VT7 or whichever one you decided to go with. So yeah, that's what the void notes are for. And as far as thoughts for what issues you could run into with the display manager. So TTY ownership, that needs to be repeated each boot. And if you're not trying to get rid of UDEV or if stuff like MDEV and libudev0 would allow this, then UDEV rules or something similar could be done to repeat it. But if you have multiple users, it's not really the most scalable option. <laughs> like, there might be something you can do with the keep TTY flag that I mentioned earlier, but I feel like that would only work with a single user if it works at all, and I'm pretty sure you would need the display manager to run as that user, which doesn't really feel like the best solution. And also, I mean, regardless, you need to make sure to reset the Xorg permissions, like, every time you update it. Which, I mean, if you're logging in from the TTY, you can just kind of alias start X so that it just runs that script before running the actual start X. But I'm not sure that it would work as well for 
the display manager and also you would kind of need to pass user x the proper username in a different way yeah that's another possible issue and i mean kind of hinted at this earlier but there is the issue of trying to figure out what user to run the display manager as which you might be able to just have like a minimally privileged user that only has the necessary permissions to run that and start an X session as whatever user. But I feel like giving it that run something as your user permission might be a little too privileged for an unprivileged user. Or alternatively, you could just have that be instead of a semi-unprivileged display manager user, have it as a semi-unprivileged X server user in general that just runs every X session, but I don't know what, if any, weird issues that might cause. So yeah, as long as you're signing in from the TTY, that's pretty much running Xorg as your user. Um, just to kind of show that it's working, just gonna do a little pgrep if I can type properly, dash l login d, no output, exited with error, and now each top just filter for x, you can see yeah, that's going to irrelevant stuff, but you can see all these X processes running as me. So yeah, it just works, and if it doesn't just work on your machine, leave a comment and I'll try and help figure it out. Yeah, that's about it for this video. Hopefully it helped someone with something, and uh, have a nice rest of your day.